What's up, Mouse Fam, and welcome to another video. Today, we're going to look at one of Walt Disney's favorite ride systems and a staple to any Disney park. So, join me as we rank all 10 boat rides at the Disneyland Resort. Let's jump into it. Number 10, Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. Oh, wait, wait. All right, howdy everybody, how y'all doing today? Good. Good, well that's about to change. Here we go, let's get those paddles up in the air. Make sure the way it's out of Now the canoes are probably the least known attraction on this list. They do have a cult following among Disney fanatics, but if you've only been to Disney on a slow day, or if you just skip past them, they're a seasonal attraction, so they are easy to miss, then you might never have been on them. They're located at the edge of Critter Country, so right as you pass New Orleans Square, right on the right before the uh, entry to Star Wars Land, you're going to see them there. Now the canoes are free-floating, so they're the only entry on this list that isn't on a set track. And that does add to the charm of them. You do all the rowing yourself with a guide, and that's what makes it so fun, but that's also what drops it down on the list. A lot of the times when you're on vacation, you don't really want to be doing a physical workout. And let me tell you, when you're on the canoes, it is a physical workout, especially if you get on with a lot of kids or vloggers, or people that are just lazy, you're gonna be doing a lot of work to get that canoe around. Now you are led by a guide, and the guide kind of has a Jungle Cruise-like way of cracking jokes and leading you around. So it is really fun and really entertaining to interact with the guides. They will keep you entertained the entire 10 to 15 minute canoe ride. But like I said earlier, it is a lot of work, so you're gonna be tired afterwards. Another con is sometimes you get splashed while kids are Kids are paddling or other people that don't know how to paddle, they're going to come back and splash you. They are only open seasonally, like I said earlier, so sometimes they're hard to get on and ride. Those are the main cons, but besides that, they offer a beautiful view of the Rivers of America, a different vantage point than you've probably ever seen before. You get right down low on the water. There's rarely a wait if the canoes are open because so little people know about them. So those two things do make it a great ride. Even though it's last on this list, that doesn't mean the canoes aren't amazing. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go ride them. Uh, this is just a great list, and the canoes are only good for about once a year, and then you're tired and you don't want to ride it again. But the canoes are still an amazing attraction. Number nine, the Storybook Land Canal Boats. Now, Storybook Land is located towards the back of Fantasyland. As you go through, it's right past Alice and right to the right of the Carousel and Dumbo. The canal boats are an opening day attraction. According to Walt, they were actually only supposed to be a temporary fill-in in Fantasyland until they could get another spot there. But the ride proved to be so popular and such a big hit among guests that they just kept it and it's been here ever since. Now you do get a skipper on this ride, very similar to the Jungle Cruise in the canoes, but they're not as original. They kind of have more of a scripted line as you're going through, so that kind of takes away a little bit of the fun. But it still is nice to have a personal narrator that's right there in your boat. And this is really a cute ride. You see some very quintessential Disney stuff on this ride. If you're a fan of Disney movies or if you grew up loving Disney as a kid, you're going to absolutely love this ride. Now some of the cons, the ride vehicles aren't very comfortable. You sit in a very small boat and it's kind of hard to get in and out of, especially if you're taller like me. But it is really worth it. The best time to ride this ride is in the morning or late at night if you can. During the day, this ride sees really long waits because it's a very slow loader. And the queue is terrible, one of the worst queues in Disneyland. It's just a switchback, and if it's hot during the day, you don't want to be stuck in that line. So ride it in the morning or at night if you can. It's really pretty. Another added bonus to this ride is oftentimes there's birds that will just come sit right next to your boat as you're riding. It's really cute. It adds a great Disney experience. It really is a perfect fit in Fantasyland. And another advantage is it's unique just to Disneyland Park. And that's always a bonus point in our book. So if you can ride the Shorebook Land Canal Boats, do it. But you don't need to make it a must-do on your list if you're only going for a day. Number eight, the Mark Twain Riverboat. This entry might be the most beautiful entry on the entire list. The Mark Twain Riverboat is picturesque Frontierland. Right as you walk into Frontierland, you see it right on the rivers of America. 
It's so beautiful. It takes you back to 40, 50 years ago. Now the ride itself is solid. It takes you around the rivers of America, which is really beautiful as well. There's a lot of great sights to see. The one thing that does knock this ride down is there's not a whole lot else other than riding around, which you can do on the canoes and on another entry on this list. But you do have multiple vantage points on this ride. There's three stories and you can go to all three. As long as it's not windy. If it's windy, they won't let you go to the top floor. But you can go on any of the floors and get a different view of the Rivers of America every time. The other advantage is because there's three floors, there's so much seating that even if you get on a full boat, you're still going to be able to get on the edge and see. It's got a very calming, narrating voice. This is a really great ride to do in the middle of the day when all the other rides have very long waits or it's super hot because you're on the water, there's shade, it's very relaxing, really serene views, very calming. So if you can ride this ride in the middle of the day, that's the best time to do it. Now, the one thing that knocks this ride down is there's not a whole lot else to do once you've been on it. It doesn't have very high rewritability. Like I mentioned earlier, there are other entries on this list, like the canoes. They give you a different vantage point of the Rivers of America. So if you've done it once, you're probably not going to want to do it again for a while. But other than that, this is a very great ride. Not a whole lot to it, and that's what knocks it down. But you have to ride this attraction if you're trying to get that full Disney experience. Number seven, Finding Nemo's Submarine Voyage. Now this might be the first controversial entry on the list. The subs, for some people, is their favorite ride in the entire park. They're located right between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. They technically are in Tomorrowland, but you can kind of see them in both. They're right below the Matterhorn. Now one of the reasons we don't have Nemo any higher on this list, and it does fall low to seven, is there's a lot of cons to this ride. Number one is it's an extremely cramped ride. If you get claustrophobic easily, you're not going to want to be on this ride at all. Number two is it's a very slow loading ride, and so if you're stuck in the queue and it's a busier day, or you're stuck in the queue in the middle of the day, it's going to take a while because the ride vehicles load so slowly. It's not a very good queue up until you get to the front. There's a couple of cute thematic elements of it, but other than that, there's nothing too special. It's kind of a chain link fence that goes back and forth. So you don't want to get stuck in this line if it's a long wait. Besides those cons though, this really is a great ride because it combines that picturesque spot that the Nemo subs are in with a very fun dark ride element. Once you actually get into the subs, you get on the ride, you get over your claustrophobia. It is a beautiful ride. They combine physical elements with screens in a perfect way, much better than a lot of other rides at Disney and Universal in my opinion. It's a really nice boat ride if you can ride it, although it's not higher on this list because of the cons. And if it's a long wait or if it's a busy day, you could probably skip this one. But if you can, hop on this ride. It's very, very cute. Number six, the sailing ship Columbia. Ahoy, shipmates. You have just set sail aboard the proud Columbia, an exact replica of the first American vessel to completely circle the globe. Now the twin to the Mark Twain riverboat is the sailing ship Columbia. Located in Frontierland, this boat isn't as pretty as the Mark Twain Riverboat, but it's a lot more practical. Now the main reason it's two spots higher than the riverboat on this list is because once you get on the boat, there's actually more to see. You can go underneath and go to a museum. It is so fun. There's captain's quarters. It looks like an old 1920s or even earlier boat that you would actually see, and it is so beautiful. So anytime you can combine a picturesque, beautiful ride with a museum, you get extra points, and that's what bumps this ride up. Now, the one con to this ride compared to the Mark Twain Riverboat is there's not as much space. There is only one story where you can uh, see the water. So you want to try and go on this ride if it's a less busy day or there's not a very big wait and you're not on the boat with a bunch of people because then it's very pretty. You can explore the museum down below. You can go up top and hear the cannon shot and just look at the Rivers of America. Very, very beautiful. All right, we made it to the top half of our list. Coming in at number five. It's a small world. Now we've made it to maybe the most iconic Walt Disney attraction of all time. Maybe the ride that made Walt the most famous, although number one on this list will have an argument for that. It's a small world looms over the back of Fantasyland. As you get through Fantasyland past Storybook Lane Canal Boats, you see the facade there. It's a beautiful facade. So fun during the holidays, especially during Christmas. They have shows every 15 minutes on the facade, and that's really something that bumps Small World up in our list. 
Small World really is a classic boat ride system too. This ride kind of paved the way for other boat rides in the future. It's a very simple ride system, but that simplicity is what makes it so lovable. Now the main con to this ride is pretty obvious. If you've been on the ride, you probably know the con. And in our book, it actually is a pretty big con. That song will drive you up a wall. If you go on this ride more than once, or if you somehow get stuck on this ride, or if you really just have a low tolerance for uh, catchy and annoying songs, then you're probably going to get very tired of this ride after a while. But despite that, it's still an amazing attraction. It has a beautiful, beautiful Christmas overlay. <laughs> part about the Christmas overlay is they cut the song in half so you don't have to hear it non-stop it's a perfect overlay and another thing about it's a small world is it's a Walt classic this is one of the most important rides Walt Disney ever built himself for the 1964 World's Fair and so that nostalgia plus the history plus the classicness of this ride really bumps it up despite its major con this is a must for any Disney trip number four Jungle Cruise <laughs> Another Walt Disney classic coming in at number four here. Jungle Cruise is located in Adventureland. And honestly, this ride is what makes Adventureland so amazing. The best part about this ride is how expansive it is. You can ride it 10 different times, and every single time, even though you know you're on a ride system, you're going to feel like you're in the middle of the jungle. Despite the animatronic animals and the corny skipper, it still does feel authentic. And that's the best part about this ride. The second best part about this ride is the skippers. Now, a lot of people are going to be turned away by the corniness of the skippers, but we actually love it. One of the best things is going on the Jungle Cruise, getting a skipper that's telling jokes you've never heard before. I'm a sucker for dad jokes, so maybe I'm a little biased. But that can make an entire day at Disneyland, getting a great Jungle Cruise skipper. The one con to this ride that keeps it out of the top three is similar to the pro of the skipper. If you get a bad skipper, it can really ruin the ride and make it less enjoyable, which does stink. And obviously the animatronics are, are, are seeing their age. They're very clearly older animatronics. But besides that, this is another Walt Classic, a ride that Walt Disney himself worked on and has made Disney the place it is. When you think boat ride, a lot of people, the first thing they think of is Jungle Cruise. It fits perfectly thematically, and it's a great relaxing 10 to 15 minute ride. All right, guys, we made it to the top three. Coming in number three, Grizzly River Run. Now this is the only entry from Disney California Adventure on the entire list. Only one boat ride at DCA compared to nine at Disneyland. But that does not mean that this ride is not fantastic. Now the best part about Grizzly River Run is the kinetic energy. When you walk through Grizzly Peak Airfield where it's located and you see Grizzly River Run just sitting right there, majestic with the wheel and the old fashioned house and the tubes going by, it's so beautiful. It adds so much to Grizzly Peak Airfield. And honestly, it adds so much to DCA. I'm not sure what this park would be without this ride. Another great part about this ride is it's one of the only rides in DCA that's been there since the opening in 2001. Uh, once they did the DCA 2.0 in 2008, they got rid of a lot of rides and refurbed a bunch. But Grizzly River Run is such a classic that they kept it. Now, personally, I'm actually not a big fan of getting soaked when I'm at theme parks. I just don't enjoy it, and so I try and avoid it. But... That actually adds a lot of thrill and suspense on this ride, which is another reason why Grizzly River Run is so fun. Adding on to that too, every time you ride this, you're with a different group because there are seats of eight. So unless you have a party of eight or you're going when there's no one else on it, you're going to be with another group and that can add a lot of fun. Some of our best memories are meeting people on this ride, trying to avoid getting soaked and laughing the whole time, especially right before the drop. There is great camaraderie to be had on this ride, which really adds to the rewritability and really bumps it up on this list. Now, one con to Grizzly River Run is the thematic fit could definitely be a lot better. Uh, it seems like Imagineers kind of skimped out on a lot of the theming of this ride, especially as you get on it. And that could definitely could be a lot better. But besides that, this ride is nearly perfect. 
Another pro to this ride is it's one of the only rides in Disneyland that is a non-IP ride. Now, for those who don't know, IP is intellectual property. So things like Pixar or even other Disney characters. This is one of the only rides that is unique to Disney theme parks. And that it makes it very special. All right, coming in at number two, Splash Mountain. <laughs> Now this ride almost made it to number one, but just fell to the two spot. The best part about Splash Mountain is it is a beautiful thematic creation. It was headed by Tony Baxter, who is one of my favorite Imagineers of all time, and he really, really, really did an amazing job with this attraction. Splash Mountain has amazing, iconic queue. It's a very fast loading ride, so whether you do fast pass or standby or even single rider, you're typically going to get on very quickly. Unless it's the middle of a hot day, then you're going to want to try and fast pass it. But besides that, it loads very quickly, so the line never stalls for too long. This ride's also an anchor of Critter Country. It's actually the reason Critter Country was created. It used to be called Bear Country, but then Imagineers really wanted to build this ride, so they put it in, Crit in Bear Country and renamed it Critter Country. Splash Mountain is a perfect combination of theme and thrill ride, but still having Disney magic. It's really hard to get all three of those, but somehow the Imagineers pulled it off of Splash Mountain. But that brings us to number one on the list, Pirates of the Caribbean. There isn't a whole lot negative to be said about this ride in general. This is probably one of the most perfect theme park rides built. It gives you a little bit of thrill, especially at Disneyland with the start. It gives you amazing dark ride scenes. It gives you over 120 animatronics. It also gives you humor. It gives you a little bit of fear. It gives you an entire full storyline, which is so hard to do on one single attraction. It also has very high rewritability. You can write it five, ten times, and you're still going to find something new. Pirates of the Caribbean is also the heart of New Orleans Square, one of the most beautiful lands Imagineering has ever built. So that really adds a lot to it too. And this is another Walt creation. This was the last ride Walt Disney ever worked on. He didn't get to ride it, unfortunately. He passed about a couple months before it opened. But this is definitely one of the best rides he has ever built and his Imagineers have ever built. The best part about this ride too is that it's original Disneyland. Yes, it spawned four other Pirates of the Caribbean rides across the world. And it spawned a hit five movie franchise. But when this ride was created, it was so unique. So original and so Disney. I also think I'm a little biased because this was the first ride I rode after I proposed to my wife in New Orleans Square. But it's also our favorite attraction. And there aren't many lists that include Disney rankings. It doesn't have Pirates of the Caribbean at number one. So with that being said, Pirates of the Caribbean gets the number one spot as the best boat ride at the Disneyland Resort. Okay, guys, let us know what you think. Give us your list in the comments below. Rank them all one through ten. Also, let us know what you guys want to see next. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.